Okay, I just, just finished watching episode 9. Holy shit, that was so good. I swear, like they made this episode just for me. No, not for you, for me. There were like a million tiny little details. That, ah, so good. I mean, it, it, it looked like a medieval painting. It did. It looked like a medieval painting that came to life. Even the colors, all, the colors that they chose, the way it was, um, the fog out on the sea and the, the, the fleet of ships coming in. Oh my god, it was so good. I don't even know where to begin. I really, I have no clue. You know, from the, from the very first scene where you see the soldiers in the bowels of the ship and then the, the one that you know, inevitably throws up. There's always one that throws up. But it just felt, um, it felt very D-Day-esque to me. <laughs> you know, I know we've all seen, like, a million and a half World War II movies, documentaries or whatever, but that's what it felt like, and it was just, it, it felt real that way. And that could only be, you know, George's influence on this one. I knew he was going to be involved in it, so, um, yeah, I saw that, you know, he wrote it. So, not surprising. Um, you know what I really loved with this? Uh, the cinematography, the... The angles of the camera, uh, the placing of the actors, um, gave so, so much strength to the feeling of that particular scene or moment or even second it was ah, beautiful it was beautiful like I said before it looked like a it looked like a painting to me it looked like a work of art um, especially when they do that that downward um, that downward angle on the bells when they're ringing and you see you can see out on the misty sea ah just mm. Uh, it was great. It so added to what was coming next with the whole conversation between Varys and Tyrion about the bells because it really did feel dreadful. It was just, oh, beautiful. I can't, I can't even talk. Look, I'm just, I'm totally nerve raging right now. Oh, sorry, Larry. I know I stole that from you. But yeah, totally nerve raging right now. Oh, okay. One of the things I love most about uh, the, the process of bringing a, a literary work into life the way that they've done it here is when they can surpass my imagination. I just, oh, I love that. And frankly, Dragonfire? Oh my god, that was so good! And the huge explosion and the ships and ah, oh, the colors. They were so vivid. It was fantastic. I absolutely loved it. Loved it. And I know, um, again, they condensed a lot of um, what happens in um, in this battle quite a bit. I mean, Tyrion's not actually on a ship in this one. Um, but, oh, and there's nothing mentioned of the chain that he actually gets, it builds for for the battle, but that's okay doesn't matter. It was fantastic. The fighting was brilliant. It was gruesome. It was bloody. It was all over the place. The smashing of the guy's skull when he gets the rock dropped. <laughs> so good. Uh, Stannis. I don't think I have liked him more than in this episode. Ah, uh, just so funny and so... Well, funny to me. <laughs> just because he's like, yeah, whatever. Hundreds are going to die. Yeah. Thousands. <laughs> so good. I love that there was a little bit of build up. Um, uh, speaking of Stannis, well, segueing from Stannis to Davos and his son. We get to see, um, you know, how pious and sort of stoic his, his son is about the whole one god thing, blah blah blah. Anyway, um, but, you know, in the end, he he tells him that he has faith in his captain. So, you know, we see the love that the father has for his son. And then, of course, <sighs> poor Davos. But, yeah. So, okay. Example of, like, the details I was talking about. 
um, with the whole dragon fire thing, uh, the signal is given, and then the camera pans to Braun, and they they do that angled scene where he pulls, he pull, <laughs> notches and pulls the arrow, and he just he ah he you forget that he's a cell sort, and he looks so heroic in that one little few second shot. It was. <sighs> this is why I love this stuff. Yeah. Ah, too good. Too good. It was so good. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so I uh, I don't even know uh, where to go. Yeah, I told you no preparation on this one. I'm just uh, all reactionary here. <laughs> is that a word? It's a word. So, um uh, the, the acting was superb. Uh, fantastic. You know, it, mm, okay, here's one thing. Okay, I'm not just totally gonna gush. Yeah, Cersei, she kind of chewed the scenery for me a bit. I mean, um, had her and all the ladies in the one room, blah, blah, blah. And she's talking to Sansa getting drunk. Um, which I thought was kind of cool. I like that. But, um, yeah, just kind of, mm, as far as the acting went, but, speaking of that, um, I love, I love uh, how in this show they, they, they take certain moments to teach characters, there's always some sort of learning that someone does at some point, um, and at, that was the time for Sansa. Um, the whole discussion, the Cersei, drunken discussion that Cersei has with her about her duties and what it's expected of her when she becomes queen. Um, the conversation with Shay about Cersei being jealous of her. Um, not only is Sansa getting life lessons at these points, but we're learning things too because obviously, you know, as the show progresses, um, more of the story is going to be condensed. Um, it has to. There's just there's just too much. So we kind of get a little glimpse of what may be coming ahead, or at least a clue as to um, how things might unfold later on. Obviously, Sansa is very important, and I really liked her in this episode. I really did. She was really good. Um, her scene with with the Hound in when he gets to her. To her chambers. Oh, was oh, so sweet. Sort of. <laughs> In a weird, creepy guy sort of way. <laughs> He's trying to save her, the one person that he cares about in all of King's Landing is his little bird, and he tries to save her, and she doesn't go. <sighs> you know what? That got me in the books, too. And it uh, really got me in this episode. I, I felt so sorry for him. You almost you almost like him. Especially when he says to her, I, I would never hurt you. I'll keep you safe. Oh, God. <sighs> anyway. Yes. <laughs> Next. You know, I, I know that I'm not going in any type of order. And I... For this episode, I'm actually kind of glad that I'm <laughs> doing it this way because I wouldn't want to overthink it. But I have to mention that um, I know that that um, Martin's uh, favorite character is Tyrion, and considering that he wrote this episode, uh, you can really see why. My Gosh, it's, if you didn't love Tyrion before, you sure do now. Um, and Peter Dinklage does such a good job with the character. Um, he, aside from the way he looks, he's exactly what I imagined. And um, the speech on the on the battlements, <laughs> it was brilliant. It, it really was. Frankly, that would have inspired me more than anything drawn out lengthy talk about honor and um, courage and uh, even freedom. 
<laughs> Yay, do it for some abstract concept. No, no. Um, there are brave men out there. Let's go kill them. Hmm. Sounds reasonable to me. I totally would have fought for him too. <laughs> ah, so good. And the, the fear, and, and, and yet he's so brave. Ah, because he's afraid. Fantastic. And, okay, minor character, but loved him in the book, and I loved him in the show as well. Podrick. Yeah, the pod comes and sticks a spear through that traitor's face, and, um, yeah, is holding his master. And, uh, at the end there, are so well done, too. Ah, I just, I, I don't even have the words to describe it, but anyway, yes, so then... Oh, uh, okay. Another cool thing. So, the whole um, Cersei telling the story about the mother and the cub to her son. Uh, creepy, yes. But almost... Almost kind of Cleopatra-esque. Except she's not dying with her... Anthony, right? She's she's going to be drinking the poison with her son so that they will not be captured and killed and all that good stuff. And then in comes Daddy. <laughs> good old Tywin shows up with the Tyrells. And the Knight of Flowers, of course, leading the way. Oh, so good. Again, Stannis. Loved him. He's yelling at his men, Stan, you bastard. <laughs> and he's getting dragged away, but... Ah, oh, so good. Yeah, I don't even know what else to say, really. Um, fantastic. I have to watch it at least, at least one more time, I think. But I, I had to get this out because I was just too excited and I loved it so much. And episode 10 is, I think, just going to rock and I'm going to be so depressed that I'm going to have to wait <laughs> for season three. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, but I am an addict and uh, yeah, I'm going to have to need a fix. <laughs> I love this stuff. Love this show. Fantastic episode. I can't say enough about it. Oh, I hope all of you that watched it enjoyed it just as much as me. I'm going to go and get some wine. I think it's time for me to get Cersei drunk. No. Ooh, no. No, no. No poison. Tyrion drunk. Yeah. A lot more fun. And wittier, too. A little snarky. Yeah. I feel like being snarky. So I'm going to go do that. And, um, yeah. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you like this, too. And if not, that's okay. I did. <laughs> Alright. Bye. <laughs>